Has anyone ever told you that you need a hobby? Well, maybe they were wrong. Welcome back to the Ascent of Mount Carmel YouTube channel. And today, at long last, we're going to finish up Chapter 4. We're going to tie up all the loose ends that uh, we haven't addressed in the previous two installments. So today, we're talking about creatures once again. And those are, as you recall, are the attachments of things that we have in this world that we love and spend a lot of time with and perhaps put them higher than God. All the neon lights and bright lights and pleasures of this world are pure darkness compared to the light of God. In this installment, I'm relying very heavily on direct quotes from St. John of the Cross in Scripture. I just don't think that I can improve upon them. St. John of the Cross writes, When the soul is clothed in these affections for attachments, it has no capacity for being enlightened and possessed by the pure and simple light of God. And this is proved by Scripture. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. We cannot be enlightened by this artificial and dim light that we get from these things. Fantasy sports, sports talk radio is not going to help us get that enlightenment. If our minds are all cluttered with batting averages and ERAs, there's no room for God. And this is because two contraries cannot exist in one person. And darkness, which is affection set upon the creatures, and light, which is God, are contrary to each other, and they have no likeness or accord between one another. And if we're allowing the creatures to overtake us, and to preoccupy us, and to divert us, we, we cannot make progress. So the dim light of these things attract our eyes, but it's just an artificial light. St. John continues, The affection and attachment that the soul has for creatures renders the soul to become like these creatures. And the greater is its affection, the closer is the equality and likeness between them. For love creates a likeness between that which loves and that which is loved. He that loves a creature becomes as low as that creature, and in some ways even lower, because love not only makes the lover equal to the object of his love, but even subjects him to it. Hence, in the same way it becomes the past that the soul that loves anything else becomes incapable of pure union with God and transformation in him. So that in this way, all the creatures are nothing, and their affections are less than nothing, since they are an impediment to transformation in God. The soul that sets its affection upon creatures will be unable to comprehend God, and until it is purged of its attachments, it will neither be able to possess him, here, below, nor yonder. The soul that is attached to the beauty of any creature is the height of deformity in the eyes of God. Therefore, this soul that is deformed will be unable to become transformed in beauty, which is God, since deformity cannot attain to beauty, and all grace and beauty of the creatures, compared with the grace of God, is the height of misery and ugliness. Scripture adds, My fruit is better than gold and the precious stone, and my blossoms more choice than silver. Finally, St. John tells us, All the delights and pleasures of the things of the world, in comparison with those delights which are God, are supreme affliction, torment, and bitterness. And thus he that sets his heart upon them is worthy of supreme affliction, torment, and bitterness. And thus he will be unable to attain the delights of the embrace of union with God. I think the point's been made here. And the first step, as I said earlier, is fasting. So, one step at a time, keep your eye on the prize. Until the next installment, please pray for the church. May God bless you.